Hello everybody. Uh, I'd like to spend a couple of minutes today showing you how to do something cool with MATLAB and Simulink. Um, being able to demonstrate how to make something change in ROS based on Simulink values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by showing you the kinds of things that, uh, that we have going on here. So I want to show you that I have ROS Core running. I'm going to stop it and then start it again. ROS Core. And over here, I want to run turtle sim to show you that I have a turtle that's sitting around here, and he's kind of not doing anything. He's just hanging out. What I want to make him do, though, is I want to make him drive in a spiral like this. So in order to make that happen, I need to send him some command velocity values. And I design controllers like this primarily in a program called Simulink. So I want to show you how to use Simulink to do this today. So let's go ahead and start Simulink up. And we'll create a new example here, blank model. And I'm gonna, before I forget what I'm doing, I'm gonna go ahead and save inside of this temp directory, spiral one. Let's just call it spiral. Having an L and a one is possibly not a good idea all the time. So in order to make this work with ROS, I need to figure out some stuff. And the first stuff I need to figure out is what kind of equation do I actually want to use uh, in order to make my system behave like this. So the canonical example that we have is something like R equals theta. This is the typical way that we describe what a spiral is, which is that whatever my, um, whatever my angle is from some point uh, should be determined by the radius that I am away from that point. So we need to be able to calculate the radius, and from the radius we're going to get a, get a value theta. When we have that value theta, that's going to tell us uh, the angle at which we'd like to be turned as, uh, as the um, turtle. So I'm just kind of sketching this out now, but it tells me that I need to know the radius that I am away from some point. What point should I use as my first radius? So let's look here in the terminal. We'll see that the turtle was spawned at 5.544. 5.544 with a, an initial value theta as the pose is equal to zero. So let's go ahead and use this value 5.544 as my initial value. So up here in Simulink and commonly used blocks, I'm going to grab a constant here, 5.5444. We're going to use this copied and pasted that pasted it there. So this is my zeroth position for x and my zeroth position for y. But I'd also like to know where the turtle is now so I can tell how far away I am. So in order to do that, last topic, echo, turtle one, pose. This is going to give me my current x and y position if I subscribe to the pose of the turtle. And I could have figured that out by saying Ross topic list that would have given me a list of all the topics that are out there and seeing that turtle one pose is one of the topics to which I could, could subscribe. Let's now go ahead and subscribe to that. So I'm gonna come down to the robotic system toolbox in Simulink, and I wanna to subscribe to a topic. And the topic I wanted to subscribe to, turtle one pose. Now I like to double click on this and make sure that when I select this topic, turtle one pose, then it will actually make the message type correct. So the message type of turtle one pose is of kind turtle sim slash pose. So I've got that information. Now one thing that you'll always want to do is terminate any connections in Simulink that you're not using. So I don't need the is new parameter here, but I will want to figure out which points that I need to have from the pose. So I'm going to take this, whoops, this bus selector, which allows me to select values off the message bus. So if I double click here, I can see that uh, there's different values in the turtle one pose that are, that are kind of interesting to me. So these are uninteresting, I'm gonna remove them. I'm interested in the X and the Y positions. So that's gonna give me current information about the turtle. And I'd also like to have uh, information uh, that I'm going to be publishing. So let's go back to the robotic system toolbox again. I want to publish information and I want to publish it to the topic turtle one command velocity. So command velocity is of kind geometry messages twist. 
So I'm going to create a blank message here. And this is of message type geometry messages. Twist. And this will create a blank message, but it doesn't give me exactly everything I need. So I need to grab one more thing over here in signal routing, which is bus assignment. So I need to make sure that the message comes in on the bus and the message goes out on the bus. But here in bus assignment, I'm going to select which values I'm going to be setting. So I'm going to be setting the x, linear.x, that gives me my velocity, and angular.z, that gives me the um, rotational velocity of my turtle. So I'm going to try in a second to just set some constants to these and see if it works. Uh, so let's, why don't we go ahead and do that now. I like this kind of incremental design uh, where we can just push some values out here. So I want to set a constant value of velocity of 1. And in fact, I'll set uh, the rotational velocity at 0 0.4. So I'm not quite ready to simulate it yet. Uh, one thing that I want to do is update my model, because right now it's going to stop after 10 seconds. So I want to update my model with a few different values here in Simulink. Uh, the first thing is I don't want it to ever stop, so I'm going to set my top stop time to infinity. I want my solver to be a fixed step solver. And I want it to run ideally at 10 hertz. So I'm going to set my fundamental sample time to 0 0.1. Now when I run it in Simulink, it might actually run faster than that. We'll see what happens here. Um, so I think now if I push play, it might actually do something. Let's see. Yep, so there's my turtle. He rode around for a few seconds and then he stopped. So because we're not getting new values over time, it's not actually publishing new values. Um, so I could set my velocity, for example, equal to the clock, uh, which would make interesting things happening. Oh, let's, not, let's not do that. So now I know that I'm, I have all the things kind of hooked up together. Uh, but what I don't know is uh, exactly how I'm going to make this spiral happen. So if I'm going to stick with r equals theta, um, I'm probably going to go with just a standard velocity for now. So let's just say, for example, uh, I want my velocity to always be equal to 2. So that's kind of easy to do. I'm not going to be updating my velocity. I'm only going to be updating, based on my position, um, what I think that uh, the rotational velocity needs to be. So to, to find out how far away I am from the origin, I'm going to subtract my x and y positions from this x0 and y0. So let's find now some uh, mathematical operations. So I'm going to use add here, except instead of adding, I'm going to be subtracting the second element. So x0 minus my x position, and then copy and paste, y0 minus my y position. This gives me my delta x and my delta y. So with delta x and delta y, I can calculate my radius by using uh, the triangle rule. So I can subtract the square root uh, of the, the squares of these two values, or I can, I can use the square root of the sum of these two squares in order to calculate my radius. So in order to do that, let me just go now and find uh, user-defined functions in MATLAB. So what I want to do is say that my output is equal to uh, the square root of u1 squared plus u2 squared. Uh, and u1 and u2 I'm going to get from here and from here. So I need to, to now use a mux to put the first element here is u1, and then this is u2, and this gives me my input vector u. And my output value here is going to be the actual radius. So this is getting kind of busy. I'm not really excited about having all these things here, so I'm going to just right-click and make this a, a subsystem. So this substitution subsystem gets the radius. So the inputs here are, delta, or are x and y, and the output is my radius. So I could make this equal to r, and n1 is x, and n2 is y.
So now I've got the, the radius of, away from the, um, or the, the distance I am away from the, the origin here. This is my radius. And based on the radius, I'm going to set my desired value of theta. So in order to have that, I would also like to know something about the actual value theta. And if I double click here again on the information I get from the pose, I can actually get my current value of theta, which will show up down here. So my desired value of theta should be whatever my current value of theta is minus my radius. So let's do another subtraction here in math functions. Plus and then minus. So my current value of my radius minus my current value of theta uh, should give me my desired value of theta. But I, I need to actually do something else. So my current value or my current desired value of theta uh, which is my rate of change of theta, is the error between these two things. But I need to divide by my sampling time. So let me find now here, divide by. And the sampling time that I need to divide by is 0.1. And that's going to give me my output uh, spiral value. So let me come back here and stop my turtle. And let's run this and just see what happens. So now we see that my turtle's kind of driving along. Everything seems to be happy here. And then I run into the edge and he gets really unhappy. So we have an idea here that uh, interesting things are kind of happening. He's, he's behaving really strangely down here and that's because uh, the that my distance away is larger than pi and so my uh, rotational velocity that I'm feeding in here into Z is being um, is, is really big uh, because we have a value here that's negative and a value here that's positive and I'm not making sure that these values are between plus and minus pi. So it's kind of a, a flawed example to some degree but we also really quickly, oops let me start that back up again, we also really quickly were able to develop a controller in Simulink that makes something move around in ROS. So what you can take away from this is that if you'd like to prototype some kinds of these calculations to see uh, what it is that you can do, then you can use Simulink or MATLAB as a prototype environment and then go from there to figure out um, exactly how to turn that into real code where you might want to bring in parameters and other kinds of things. Thanks for watching and I hope this was useful for you.